Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can do web scraping with JavaScript using the third party package Puppeteer. So in case you're not familiar with web scraping, it's going to a web page and getting some information contained on it. So for example, I could set up Puppeteer to come to this page and get some information from it, like the number of weekly downloads and the total files and the issues, and then store that information somewhere on my system. So this is just one example, but what I'm going to be scraping in this tutorial is data from this website, which is listing upcoming events. So this is something a bit more like what you would want to do in a real project. So for each event, I'm going to be getting the title, the description and the date and storing that all in a JavaScript object. So you have all the information about the events that are upcoming in one data object. So to get started, what you need to do is install Puppeteer. Now I'm going to do that via NPM. And if you have Node installed, then you will have NPM installed. So first of all, if you're not sure whether you have Node installed, then open your terminal. I'm using Windows PowerShell in Windows. If you're using a Mac, you would use Terminal. And to check if Node is installed, just type Node followed by minus V, so the V flag. And if this returns a version number to you, it means you have Node installed. If not, then you still need to install Node. So to do that, head to the official Node website. I would advise installing the long-term stable version because it's less likely to have bugs. It's free. And once you've done that return and you can continue with the tutorial. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is to create an empty project folder somewhere on your system. So I've already created one here on my desktop called web scraping. So I'm going to want to set the current directory in my terminal to this new project folder. So a little shortcut is to drag and drop that into the terminal and then I don't have to write the file path. So it's CD followed by the file path. So I'm now in the new project folder. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do next is to create a new node project in the folder and it's into that project that I'm going to be installing Puppeteer. So first of all, to create a new node project, it's npm init, and you can use the Y flag to say yes to all of the defaults when you're creating a new node project. Otherwise you have to sit there and press return a lot. So for the purposes of this demonstration, um, just accepting the defaults is fine. Okay, so now we're ready to actually install Puppeteer. So for this step, make sure you're connected to the internet because we're going to be downloading it from the NPM library. So if I say NPM install, and I'm going to want to save this as a development dependency in my project, and then I just need to type Puppeteer, and this is going to download it from the node library. So this will just take a moment. Okay, so now that Puppeteer is installed, we're ready to write the web scraping app in the project folder. Okay, so now in the project folder in the root directory, so inside package.json, you can see that we now have Puppeteer listed as a dependency of our project. So now what I'm going to do is to create my web scraping app in JavaScript. So I need to create a new JavaScript file. So you can call this whatever you want. I'm going to call this index.js. So the first thing you need to do here is to import Puppeteer to your project. So the way that you do that is save it inside a variable. Now it's convention really to call this Puppeteer, but you can call it whatever you want and it will still work. So all I need to do is use require and then Puppeteer. And that's going to save all of the functionality and data that Puppeteer contains in this variable. And then I can access that using dot notation in the rest of my script. Now Puppeteer contains a lot of asynchronous processes. So what I'm going to do is handle all of this inside an asynchronous function. And I'm going to make it a self-executing function because I want it to execute right away. So I could give it a name and then call it, but given that I want it to run once immediately as soon as the page loads, it just makes more sense to make it a self-executing function. Okay, so now I can actually start using the functionality of Puppeteer. So to do so, I need to call methods on the Puppeteer object that I've saved up above. And the first one I want to call is launch. So this is going to do something quite particular. It's going to launch uh, an instance of the Chrome browser. 
and it's going to give me, so it's asynchronous, I need to include the await keyword before it, and it's going to return a value, and that value is going to be an object, and that object is going to have methods on it itself that's going to allow me to control the new browser instance. Now, a little trick here, if you want to see uh, Puppeteer actually opening the browser, specify the option headless and set that to false. So this is telling Puppeteer to launch a new browser instance and effectively to not do it silently. So I'll show you it doing that. So type node and the name of my file is index. So let's see. Okay, so it's opened a new browser instance and I'm getting this message. Chrome is being controlled by automated test software, but no page is loaded. So the next thing we need to do is to tell Puppeteer to navigate to a page. But first of all, what I need to do is to actually open a page in the first place. So for that, I use a method on the browser object, which was returned last time. And the method you want to call here is new page. Okay, and that's going to return something as well. And that is going to be the page, page object, and that's going to have methods on it that we can use to navigate to an actual web page. So the way that we do that is we say, okay, this is asynchronous. So it's page, go to, and then you type in the URL that you want to navigate to in here. So I'm going to get that from here. So the URL of the what's on page where I want to scrape data from is there and paste that in. Now let's check if that's working. So I'm going to run this app again in the terminal and this time it opens the browser instance, but now we're navigating to a page and it's going to the page that I wanted. So now that Puppeteer is on this page, what I need to do is get the data that I want from this page. So I can do this by calling the evaluate method that is on the return page object. So I type page dot evaluate. Okay, and this is asynchronous. So I do need to use the await keyword in front of it. And this takes a callback function. So the really cool thing about this callback function is you can write regular JavaScript for the browser in here, and it's going to run it in this new browser instance. So you can use regular JavaScript to select the elements, store them in a JavaScript object, and then save them in Node. And the way that you save them is you create a return value for this callback function, and then you can save the result of that in a variable. So I'm going to call this data, and then the data is available in Node, and you can see it if you do a console log after the page evaluate call. So make sure you don't do your console log inside the callback function because what that's going to do is run it in the browser. So all the code in this callback function, it's running it in the browser. Okay, so now we're ready to start actually getting some data from the page. So what you need to do is go to the page and have a look in inspector tools how you can go about selecting each bit of data that you want. So for example, first of all, I want to get the title for each one. So a good way to do this is to actually, if they're in cards like this, which it looks like, is to select all of the cards first of all. So I can get each event card. So it looks like each one is in a div with a class of product list item wrapper. So I'm going to select all of those using the query selector. Okay, so for this, I want to use the query selector all method. Okay, and it's a class, so it's dot and then product list item wrapper. And I want to save that as, save it in a variable called events. So what I can do now is to iterate through each of the events. So for that, I'm going to create a four loop and I'm going to set this so I starts at zero that the loop breaks when I is equal to events.length and I want I to increase by one each time. Now inside the loop what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, an object for each of the events 
and I'm going to create an array before the loop and I'm going to push each event object into this array. So I'm going to end up with an array of objects that's going to be the return value eventually. So I'll actually start the loop with array dot push and then I'll have the object that's going to be pushed each time in here. So the first thing I want to get is the title for each event. So this is going to be events I and then I need to look back at my document and see how I can select the title. So use the inspect element so it's in a product detail link. So I should be able to select that with inner text. Let's see. So I say events I and then I can use query selector inside that uh, event. So inside that product list item wrapper and I want to select the product detail dot in a text. Okay, so next I want to get the description for each event. So back here, let's take a look at how we can select that. So you can see that the query selector is, is very useful for this kind of stuff. So it looks like it's going to be in a paragraph inside a div with the class desk. So let me so I'm going to do exactly the same here. I'll just copy it, but this time it's going to be description and it's going to be desk. And finally, I want to get the date. So heading back to the browser, let's have a look how dates are stored. So dates, so to get the whole thing, it looks like I can select this element here, so the class is dates. So I'm just going to copy again. This time I want the property name to be dates and the value to be, it was just dates. Okay, so let's see how that comes out now. Okay, so what should happen overall is Puppeteer launches, goes to the page that I want. I'm then evaluating that page using this JavaScript here. I'm creating an array and I'm pushing details about each event into that array as an object, title, description, and dates. And then I'm logging the output in Node by calling console log after this page evaluate call. Now, actually, I just see that I'm not gonna get anything back if I run this code now. I need to return a value for this page evaluate callback function. So let's see if this works now. If so, we should see we get back an array of objects containing information about each event. So Puppeteer opens the page and hopefully it scrapes the data. So you can see here in the output, I now have an array of objects for each of the events. So that is how you can do web scraping with JavaScript using the Puppeteer package for Node. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button below this video. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.